Is it working out? This is Shelby Reinschmidt, a young woman who is part of a medical trial at the University of Iowa for a new type of cochlear implant called a hybrid. A hybrid cochlear implant aims to keep existing hearing, where a standard cochlear implant does not. She loves to sing. She loves music. She's just into it. In fact, everybody can't believe how good she can sing and how pitched she is because of her being hard hearing and, and, and all that. And she can carry a tune. She's, she's like a number one high soprano. I'm just like, wow. You know, in fact, that she could do that with her hearing, I'm just, it always amazed me. You know, it just amazed me. She told me that she's like, I can't wait till I get the cochlear implant because then she'll be able to correct or pitch or whatever. Whereas right now, people would tell her, oh, no, that's not quite right. She had a pretty good loss when she was two or three, but recently it spiraled downhill. However, she's, she's been missing the high, high pitch noises for most of her life. She, she'll come home and she, from school and she'll say, and she'll, I can tell she's had a bad day. And I'm like, she's like, well, you know, I, I, I don't always hear what they say. And I say, what? And then they just kind of ignore me and they go on like, ugh, because they don't want to answer. It's just, mom, it's so frustrating. And, and that's why she wanted it. And I want that for her. I want her just to feel like she belongs. When we went up to do this, I was like, no. You know, I like, I like, we'll go, we'll go through the, you know, because they first we were going because her hearing had dropped off. I mean, there was a, a dramatic change from the last year's hearing test to this year's hearing test. And so we made an appointment in Iowa City, you know, went up and they said, they pretty much, the same results. They said, yes, we got the same, same results that the person in Burlington did. And, we're, and I was kind of like sick, you know, I'm like, oh. And um, so then they said, you know, she's, and I go, she's interested in cochlear implant, you know, I, she and so I said would you like to make an appointment I said yes I will make an appointment because never hurts to hear anything out so when we went that day you know we told her you know you got about 30 or 40 percent say in this and you, your dad and I have the rest and we we out trump you so when we went up and he met me up there you know because he was later and I got there and, and she, she went through all these tests and we're listening and you know she was having a, a tough time you know I could think like I don't remember what the exact results were but she came back, she, she said, I have to do one more. We're kind of like, uh, you know, close. And so I want to do one more test. And then she came back and talked to us. And she said, she said, um, you guys are a candidate for, um, you know, the cochlear implant. And then when Tanya said, we have a hybrid cochlear implant, and then went on to explain about it, I just started bawling. A standard cochlear implant uh, is, the way it's designed, it's too large, it goes into the inner ear and usually destroys what residual hair cells there are left. You can get by and, and save a few, but it, it's not enough to really get word understanding acoustically without the electrical signal. So I was trying to figure out how do we expand the criteria for cochlear implants without destroying the residual hearing. And I came up with this concept of trying to put a shorter, thinner device in the inner ear. And we started that in 1999. And so the first thing we found out was that, yes, the inner ear will accept a foreign body that goes 6 to 10 millimeters into the cochlea. And we could, uh, we could preserve the residual acoustic hearing. And that's how the hybrid concept all developed. It is something that allows us to approach people like Shelby and try to preserve her residual hearing. And Shelby has like a 20, 30% word understanding with her acoustic hearing. And we hope to activate the high frequency so that she gets a better word understanding in the 70s to 80% word understanding. And, and another thing is, is that you get music appreciation. With a standard cochlear implant, music is not well encoded. And uh, having that temporal fine structure is really important for listening to music and hearing the fundamentals and, and the harmonics of music. So she should get that. And if we preserve the acoustic hearing on both sides, she'll get localization and be able to tell where sound is coming from. I said, yes, this, this, is, this is it. I said, this is what I'm talking about. And the fact that they only do one, so if something would go wrong, she would still have the other ear. 
And then I opened my, I became open-minded and I called him and I said, you've got to be here. You've got to talk to Dr. Gans with me. You've got to be here. And he was like, okay, okay. I'm a little nervous, really nervous, and I'm really excited to do this, and I can't wait. Anyway, when everything's ready, we'll just walk you back to the operating room. We'll get you on the operating table. We'll get a few things connected to so we'll follow your blood pressure, your cardiogram, and we'll give you medicine through the IV. Yeah, <laughs> Take about two, three hours to do the surgery, probably. Okay. We'll give you a call and give you an update when everything's all done, okay? Sure. You never had an IV that you know of, huh? Mm -hmm. Good. See you in just a little bit. Okay. I'm actually, Dad. I'm yeah. gonna have you help yeah. me walk her to the bed, just in case you get a little dizzy when you stand up. Okay. All right. Whoops. There we go. Are you dizzy? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I got you. How you doing, beautiful? Okay. Okay. It's just right out here. Oh, yep, right? yeah. <laughs> All right. So this Bye is the time we're we'll praying for you. All right. Love you, baby. Love you. <laughs> All right. See ya. Let's try again. Can you hear that? Okay. Well, that's a good sign. But um, it's not super can, reliable. Can you hear her voice or could you hear the scratching on your ear? That's good. Awesome. Good. Great. Yay. Okay. Good. How are you feeling right now? Relieved. <laughs> Happy. Tell us what just happened with the doctor. Well she, well, she just did the scratch test in her ear. And she could hear it. <laughs> Which means success. Now it starts. Uh, I am so thrilled for her that she can hear. That was always my biggest concern. It's on. Is it soft? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn this up. Is that okay? It doesn't sound loud. Loud, okay. How about here? Is that better? Mm -hmm. A little loud. A little loud? Okay. Is that better? Your face is all red. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. You feel a little loud, but yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these levels, and they're going to be really soft to start with. And then you're going to go home, and you're going to increase those levels to make the difference between this threshold and comfort level wider and wider. Okay? So you're going to be giving yourself more and more sound. Can Natalie come in? Sure. That's Natalie, good. come in here. So talk to your sister and see if she can hear you well. Oh, this is your sister, huh? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> How well do you hear me? How well do you hear me? Yeah, you talk a little too fast. So these sounds that you haven't heard for a really long time, mm -hmm. your brain is trying to pair those and figure out what it's hearing. Sometimes it happens quickly for people. Sometimes it takes a very long time is that the brain will start to figure out, okay, this sound goes with this. The morning that she came down, uh, I was asking her, uh, has she heard anything new? And she says, well, yeah, I heard a really annoying sound that I just couldn't figure out what it was. I was looking around my room, I'm like, what is that sound? And like, I looked up and I'm like, oh, it's my ceiling fan. And uh, so that was, that was really neat. To, to have that interaction with her. She, she can understand me better without looking at my lips. She reads lips very, very well. And now when she's looking the other way and I speak to her, she hears what I say instead of having to uh, ask me to repeat myself more often. I expect more to happen, like to be able to hear more high pitch sounds like the birds and the crickets and other high pitch sounds? Uh, more than likely, it'll have such a profound impact on her that eventually we'll get the other ear. So once it's all turned up and fully initiated, if you will, uh, 
think it'll be uh, amazing.